Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we have another quick tip for you. Uh, we had a question that came in from Bill, and he asked, how do you take a list box with several items in it and move the items around? So we're going to use a spin button, the up and down clickers, that allows us to click up and down, and we're going to show you some custom code that will allow you to move your items around as you see fit. We're going to keep it pretty simple, but let's go ahead and head into Visual Basic Editor right now, and we're going to make a user form to put our list box on. Alt F11. All right, so when you're here, we're going to actually add a user form. So click this drop down and click on User Form. And now we'll be able to add a list box. So in this case, you can just click and drag your list box, whatever you want it to be. We'll keep this one pretty basic. So uh, in the user form section let's double click on that form and I don't want to user form click but I want to user form initialize so that's whenever the user form opens what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say with or in regards to list box excuse me I'll say me dot list box one so we can have that accessible and I'm gonna say end with what this means is that anything I'm gonna hit tab that anything inside this section it automatically knows that I'm referencing the list box one that means I don't have to type me dot list box one a million times I can simply type dot and it knows that I'm referring to this specifically the list box so I'm gonna say dot add item spacebar and I'm gonna do the number one dot a tab two dot a space three and we're just gonna add a few items okay I'll just add uh, five of them so we're gonna add one two three four and five so if I hit the play button or hit F5 it would actually open up with the list box having added you know five items to it which is great and all but now we need to add a spin button we need to start coding a little bit let me scooch this out a little bit so I can fit a spin button here so let's see here. here's our spin button let's just single click that's a nice size by default that's fine with me now here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna double click on the spin button and take a look at some of the code here so we don't want to change event for the spin button I don't really care when it changes I care when it spins up or when it spins down so I can do separate things okay so we're gonna go to the spin up and the spin down we've just created both of those here and here and I'll get rid of the change and I'll get rid of the user form click because I don't really care about those all right so let's just take one at a time let's just concentrate on one let's do the spin up event so if I click the up button what I want to do with whatever is selected is I want it to uh, take on the value of the thing above it and I want the thing above it to take on the value of it so let me explain that a little bit more first of all let's just take a look at it so we're gonna say uh, first of all we need to get the the index number so the index number of the chosen value that has been clicked on uh, and remember these are a zero value item so let's just go ahead and get that and we'll take a look at it in real time current index is going to be equal to we'll do me dot list box one dot list index the list index property tells you what item number of the number uh, of, of choices that you have selected so if I hit the uh, the F9 key or if I click on this little breakpoint bar here that'll pause the code execution whenever I spin up all right so let's go ahead and hit play now I'm gonna select number three here but and if I click the spin up button it'll go ahead and pause our code I'm gonna move this code window over here I'm gonna move the user form over here so we can see both now if I take a look I haven't run this line yet it's still yellow so if I hit F8 it'll show me that the current index that I chose was 2 well you remember we said that this is a zero index thing for the for the list index is a zero index value so that means it starts with 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and we normally think of it as one two three four and five but the very first entry is entry number zero so the third entry in our minds would actually yes have be the number two all right that's the first thing we wanted to do we want to get the index number so that we can use that later to to relocate that then we're going to get the current value so the current value you can get that a couple ways but the way I prefer to do it let's just put that in a variable called curveval we're gonna get it by saying me dot list box one tab and you could either do dot value but I don't want to do dot value because I want to be able to get 
the value using an index number later, and I'll show you why. So we'll use dot list, and then we can put whatever index number we want. In this case, we'll use the current index that we just acquired. So if I hover over this, we know it's index number two, but if I hover over that, the list property, uh, specifically the index number two, gives us the value of three. So that is the value we're looking for. So if I backtrack this right here, we are now storing the current value, which we're going to need later to replace some things, is three. Okay, that's the one I have selected, so that is absolutely correct. And we know that since we're spinning up, since we spin up, we're wanting the other value to be that, whatever this index is, minus one to get to the row above it, right? So then the other index is going to be equal to basically the current index minus one. One, Okay, that's going to be the other index. And when we do the spin down event, we'll simply change that to a plus sign. We'll be good to go. But we can now refer to this other index uh, in our code in just a little bit. Okay, now, and let's go ahead, just for good measure, let's get the other value. We have the current value saved, and we'll probably need the other uh, the other value as well. So how do we do that? Well, we'll do the same thing. Me.listbox1.list, and instead of using the current index, what do I use? You got it, the other index, okay? And so let's go ahead and take a peek at that. And uh, let's run this here. So other index is going to be the current row minus one, basically, which is number one, zero, one, correct. So then the other value is gonna be the value of two. That's correct. So now we have stored the value of three, which is good. We've stored the value of two, which is good. Because we're gonna put the value of three here, and we're gonna put the value of two here we're going to swap them essentially so here is where we perform the swap okay here's where we perform the swap so all we have to do is take me dot list box one that's the name of the list box and use the dot list now what would i put in there if i wanted to throw the current value into the other index so we're going to take the other index number that's the one on top that currently has the value of two in it. And inside that, we're gonna make that equal to the value of the current value. So we're gonna put the number three inside where it has the number two. Okay. So if I hit F8, we're gonna watch up there, it's gonna happen. So we put the three over here, and then we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna copy and paste this line. You're, I'm pretty sure you, you know what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna take the current index and put the other value where that was. So the value of two is now gonna go where three currently was. So if I hit F8, excuse me, let me scroll up here and hit F8. So now the three has gone here, the two has gone here, but wait, Dan, we still have this, um, this middle one selected. Well, that's, that's the next thing we wanna do is we wanna just, you know, for good measure, we're gonna select, select the upper result or, or the of result. We want the mouse to select that as well. So we would take me.listbox1.selected, and just like we did with the other index number uh, with the dot list, we can also take the dot selected for the other index and make that equal to true. So that what that will do is that'll select the thing that we visually want to see it select. It would follow the number three that we had selected. Uh, so if I hit F8 now, the selection follows what it normally would look like. Let me hit F8. So I'm going to take this breakpoint off just for a second, and I'm going to select the number four, and I'm going to hit up, and let me just hit F5 or hit the run button. All right, so if I hit up again, hit up again, so it, the four is following it upwards. And really, it's not really following it. What's happening is we're just swapping whatever's above it with whatever's selected. Now, here's the fun thing. Uh, if I hit the up arrow now, it'll create an error. So let's let that happen so that we can debug that. See, what's happening is, let's hit debug. What's happening is we are asking it now to go uh, minus one from zero. And there is no such thing as a list index of negative one. If the list index is negative one, that means there's no selection. That's the code. So what we need to do here is create a few different um, if then statements at the very beginning of our macro to make sure that no errors occur from this. First thing that I would say is if me.listbox1.listindex, 
the index, if that is equal to zero, meaning they're at the very top of the list, like we are right now, then I would say exit the sub, which, which means don't do anything, okay? The other thing that I would put on almost anything that I ever use a selected um, entry on a list box, I almost always put something like this. If me.listbox1 dot list index is equal to negative one, then exit sub. I just do that almost every time I use a list box because what that means is there's been no selection. Or I sometimes I'll go ahead and give a friendly message box if that happens and say, hey, please select an entry on whatever menu it is. Ultimately, it will, it will exit out and have them try again. So let's pretend that that occurred. Let's go ahead and put it up here. Let's see. if Is the list index equal to negative 1? No. Well, then there is something been selected. That's good. Now, is the list index equal to 0? It is. So that means we're going to exit the sub. So we're not going to go down here and then get any errors because there's nothing to swap with. There's nothing above that entry, right? So then now it won't give us any errors. Whoops. Let's hit the F5 button. There we go. Now it won't give us any entries any errors even though it's running all the way. Now if we want to do the same thing or similar thing to the down click arrow we would simply copy and paste this stuff and barely tweak it. So I'd say let's go ahead and do that but before we do that for efficiency's sake let's go ahead and close the user form and double click anywhere here. So to make this a little bit more efficient uh, what we want to do before we move on is we want to take this me.listbox1 which is just plastered everywhere and I want to make this a little bit more efficient so I'm going to use it only one time I'm only going to make Excel reference or locate the object called me.listbox1 one time so we'll, to do that we say with me.listbox1 okay and then underneath it at the very bottom we'll say end with and then I'm going to take everything else in here and I'm going to tab it. The reason I, in, I click the tab key to indent all this stuff is so that I can visually see that all this stuff is contained within the with end with statement. It's just a lot easier. So that being said now I can remove the me.listbox1 and all these will still work. I could have done a find and replace, but since there's not that many, this will actually be a little faster than me typing and getting everything perfect. Okay, so everything is in reference to, so any dot whatever is in reference to this object right here, and Excel only has to locate it one time. So that'll make it run a little bit faster. Um, not a lot because I have a pretty fast computer anyway, but every little bit helps, right? So anyway, let's make sure that that worked before I proceed. Uh, so I'm going to click here, up, up, up. Yeah, it's working great. Perfect. Let's go ahead and copy that to the spin button down, the spin down event. So we already know the spin down event is right here. Let's take all the relevant code right here and just paste it to the spin down event. Obviously, we'll need to make a few changes. I'll trim out these extra spaces here. So let's put a breakpoint right here at the very beginning, and then we'll just kind of go through it as we click the spin down button, all right? So I'm going to select this item number. It's the number two, but it's the third index number. So if I hit spin down, it'll trigger our macro, but I did put a breakpoint, so it's going to pause. Now we're going to go ahead and hit uh, F8 to get into it. Now is the list index negative one, meaning no selection made? No. Is it the very... Now this will have to change, right? Because uh, it, we only care if it's zero, uh, if they're at the very top. Now we want to care if they're at the very bottom because we're spinning down. How do you tell if it's at the bottom? There's no default number of whatever the bottom is. Uh, zero is always the top, right? Well, guess what? We can simply use the list index number or the list count rather. So if I said me.listbox1 dot list count, if I hover over that, let's take a look at what that would be. Well, that'd be the number five. So you say, hold on a second, Dan, I thought you said this is zero index. Well, for some reason, the list count is one based and not zero based. So all I have to do to compensate is say the list count minus one. So there are five entries, but the very last one is an index number of four, or the list count minus one. So if the list index, the current one selected, is equal to that thing I just said, which is four in this case, then exit the sub and don't you know screw everything up. 
So it's not, so we're fine. List index, the value is this, whatever's that. Now, the other thing is the other index, instead of going to be this minus one, it's going to be the one below it. We're going to swap with the thing below it. So we would just simply make this a plus sign. And since we planned our code efficiently with these variables, instead of putting minus, 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 plus one here, plus one there, we just did it all in one variable. Now everything will just kind of work. So the other index is, is 2, the other value is 3, so that's correct. And then we're just going to do a swap root, and then we're going to select whatever the other index is, which was the index of 2 instead of 1. So we select that, and bada bing, it just is going to work now. So I'm going to hit F5 to complete this macro, and I'm going to take a random one. So I'm going to click 5, I'm going to hit down to make sure there's no errors. Good, it exits the sub. Now if I hit 4, and I hit the down arrow, good, it swapped with 5. Still no arrows, hit the up arrow, boom. So now we're able to take any of these entries and move them anywhere that we want. All right, that's basically it. Um, if you'd like to take a look at my Excel Essentials course, we'll have the link right there in the upper right-hand corner, I believe, of your screen. Uh, check the links in the video description if you want to download this workbook or see any of my other courses or products or free blog. If you want to contact me, there's a link in there as well. So, yeah, um, if you want to download this free workbook, please do so in the video description, and we will see you later. Thanks for watching. God bless.